In a certain church there was a man in the choir who couldn't sing well. The choir director suggested that he should leave the choir. Others felt that he should be given more time to improve. But the director of the choir decided to go to the pastor and complain and say, you have to get this man out of the choir or else I am going to resign. So the pastor went to the man and said to him, perhaps I think you better leave the choir. The man immediately said, why should I leave the choir? And the man who said, why should I leave the choir? Perhaps then the pastor said, about four or five people told me that you cannot sing at all. That's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. Forty or fifty people told me that you cannot preach at all. Today's gospel reading shows how God can make use of mostly unlikely people who do not think that they are fit for this mission, but they fulfill the divine plan and the divine purpose of God. Very often you will find that the most unworthy person is called to do the divine work. And today's gospel reading, the first, uh, first reading and the second reading are correlated to show the call of Isaiah, the call of Paul and the call of Peter and his companions. And this is exactly the call for each and every one of you, that you are called, even though you say, no, no, I am not fit enough. He has called you for a particular purpose. It may be something, somewhere that he wants you to fit in, in that divine purpose of his. It is only you and I sometimes are caught up with the world that we are not able to trace out what is that. But if you look into today's gospel reading and the two other readings, you will say like how Peter, Paul and Isaiah become co-workers. They realize that there is a presence of God in them. This is what we see very clearly. For Isaiah says in the first reading, O oh, to me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. How can you choose me? But the presence of God is there in him. That is how God knows this man is fit enough for it. Similarly, you find what Peter said. He said, go away from me, Lord, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. I am not fit. I am a sinful man. I am a fisherman. I know how to fish. I know everything. And I told you that I cannot because we have toiled all night long and caught nothing but at your word. Now we see that there is something important happening there. The presence of God is felt, but at your word. And so also, you and I will think, I'm not worthy, I'm a sinful man. But at your word, when you acknowledge, you are experiencing the presence of God. And so also you find what Paul says. Paul very clearly says, I am not worthy, for I have persecuted people. I cannot be called an apostle. How can you choose me? to go and do your work. But you see how powerful Paul becomes. Therefore, one important aspect that we see in all the three reading is, humility is said to be the first primary virtue in authentic spirituality. You and I are spiritual people. But humility is that which makes you authentic spiritual person. Therefore you find all the three say, I'm not worthy, I'm a sinner, I'm not to be called an apostle, which shows that they are humble enough. Feeling of personal 
worthiness or competence not to talk about the feeling of self righteousness the righteousness of superiority is that which destroys the presence of god because i consider myself superior i consider myself personally worthy very competent then god's presence goes away from us but in our humility god's presence is felt therefore you are ready to do anything for god you are ready to do anything for jesus the second aspect that we see here is when all the three confess i am not worthy i am a sinner i am not fit to be a apostle the soul confess its sinfulness the inadequacy before god God at that time reaches out he absolves you he forgives you he renders you competent to serve him so you see very clearly that when you come to show your humility he empowers you he strengthens you and he makes you fit enough like in the case of Isaiah we see oh now that it, you have touched our lips the guilt has departed and the sins are blotted away so i can now become worthy so also peter said when jesus says to him do not be afraid from now on you are going to do something else you are going to catch men so you see one is isaiah is forgiven the sins are all blotted off the second aspect is that peter is now commissioned to catch men and paul who said by the grace of god i am what i am he considers himself powerful but because of jesus the third aspect that we see in today's three readings beyond the feeling of personal unworthiness there is another quality of all these three people call to do god's work in today's readings have in common and that is the availability to god willingness readiness to follow his directives this is very important when you are called are you ready are you available it's not are you fit enough but from your side are you ready are you willing are you now fit now ready to do this work like how isaiah in the voice said whom shall i send and whom shall i send and who shall go with us and isaiah says here i am lord now that is readiness he not only said here i am lord he also said send me that is the willingness so also you find peter and his partners they left everything in spite of the heavy catch in spite of the miracle happening they leave everything and they follow him that is the readiness that is the willingness not to look back but to look at what jesus wants them to do so also you find what paul wants in today's second reading it said it was not i but the grace of god that is with me has made me ready and therefore i can't say no to you i have to say yes like you know it's not that cornering paul but rather making him powerful empowering him that is how they all the three show their availability and willingness to go out and do the lord's work the final aspect that we see here is when we follow the guidance of god when he calls you and when you are ready to do and show your availability and willingness we can achieve results that will blow your mind out 
And that is what happened to Peter and the others. Their minds blew off and they were astonished at the catch. Jesus is not a fisherman. He is a carpenter's son. But he tells them, put your nets in the deep. And they catch. Just imagine the fishermen must have been astonished. Are you some extraordinary fisherman? Or are you an underground current that knows where the fishes are? That you are capable of telling us, we toiled all night long, we caught nothing, and now you are telling. But look at Peter, at your word. That is again the willingness and readiness. Therefore you see, these fishermen did not set their mind to tell Jesus, we are fishermen, you are no one. But they did what Jesus wanted. Today, as always, the Lord is always again continually asking this question, who shall I send? And who will go for for me? Just like how it was for Isaiah. Who shall I send? And who is there for me? It is for you to answer, my Lord, my dear friends. It is for you to answer. Here I am, Lord. I am ready to go. Amen.